Do you want to get better as an artist? One of the best way to get more ideas, make more art, and get better at your art is, well, to work on your art. <laughs> I know, I know, it's basic, but it's true. As the slogan goes, just do it. Get to your studio or your table, or your atelier, and make the work. As the brilliant quote goes, amateurs wait for inspiration, the rest of us just show up and get to work. However, I have found that brilliant ideas and the fuel I need for my creative practice often happens when I'm away from the studio. In fact, there are six creativity boosting activities that I try to make a part of my life on a regular basis because they have been so powerful for my studio practice. Welcome to the Josie Lewis Show, where it's artist to artist chat about making art and selling art, because I think artists should get paid. If you want to learn the steps I took from going from an artist slash waitress to a full-time artist with a thriving art studio selling art all over the world, I wrote a very handy guide for you. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Selling Your Art Online. You can download it for free at josielewis.com slash ultimate. Okay, let's talk about those six ways that help me to be more creative. Number one is to walk. Going outside, especially in nature, is one of the best things that we can do for so many of our daily processes. It's good for our bodies and it's good for our minds. It creates a cascade of positive, health-affirming hormones and feel-good chemicals. Experientially, walking in nature for me is like blowing fresh air through the attic of my brain. It helps me process stress and it helps to process through the anxiety that can interfere with a free and active creativity. The second thing that I do is remove the pressure. A lot of creatives are ambitious, passionate, and energetic, but sometimes perfectionism can creep in. Perfectionism is tight, narrow, constricting, and afraid. Creativity is open, wide-ranging, and flexible. Perfectionism is often a product of being afraid of failing, being afraid of uncertainty, and being afraid of nuance. Creativity must actually embrace all of those things. You gotta love failing, you gotta love uncertainty, and you gotta love nuance to be a good artist. One way to metabolize the perfectionism is to remove the pressure. Maybe you'll make something you throw away. Maybe you'll make art that just isn't important. It's just play. Maybe you'll write a poem or play a song on the piano or do a cartwheel. Just take the pressure off and do something fun. The third thing I do is write. I could say a lot about manifesting, but for right now, I'll say that my journal is my manifesting device. I write down dreams about my art, and then I write down the steps that I know I'll need to take to produce the art and fulfill my dreams. I write every day, but it's rarely a record of the past or my emotions. It's almost always future-oriented, hopeful, action-focused, and specific. On these same lines, the fourth thing I do is that I'm very careful about my words. Growing up in church, the pastor used to say, don't make a bad confession. There's a lot of left behind from my childhood church experience, but I've kept this good advice. I am very careful about how I speak about my art, about my process, and about my struggles. It's not toxic positivity like ignoring setbacks or traumas. It's about deliberately reframing them with future-oriented hope and recovery. It's also about positioning my thinking and my words to give myself as much agency as possible, meaning I wanna make sure that I'm owning my responsibility and my action abilities to propel my own art and my own ambitions forward. Therefore, instead of saying something like, Instagram makes it impossible for me to reach new people, I say something like, social media is one part of the riddle, but I have lots of tools in my arsenal when it comes to connecting with my audience. The fifth thing I do is meditate slash chill slash mull. 
<laughs> there is low level mind numbing, like watching TV or playing Minesweeper or Sudoku or something. And then there's higher level free range thinking. This kind of thinking is sometimes done in deliberate formal meditation. And it's sometimes done in alternative ways. In fact, this kind of thinking is often combined with my writing practice, but the essential thing here is that it's unstructured time, awake dreaming that's allowed to be fantastical and far out and impractical. Those are the ingredients of amazing art, by the by. The sixth thing I do is look at art in real life and actively be exposed to as many different concepts as I can come across. If you are lucky enough to live near major museums and galleries, these visits can provide unexpected fodder for your creativity practice. In this age of echo chambers with social media, we can be constantly fed what we already know we like. My Pinterest algorithm does not try to surprise me with new ideas. It just shows me what I have already expressed interest in. Currently, that's cake decorating, abstract watercolors, and bathroom faucets, because that's what I've been clicking on recently. But when I go to a museum, it's certainly curated, but it's not curated in a way that's personally targeting me. So I will be exposed to stuff that I may not like and that I may have never seen before. This new awareness acts like seeds in my creative thinking and unexpected things will certainly sprout and grow. There you have it. I could also add other things to this list like travel and talk to other artists and creatives, watch interesting movies, read good books, and so many more things that can help give a boost to my creativity. What do you do to give yourself that creativity boost? Let me know in the comments. And if you have been enjoying the content that I am dropping, I definitely appreciate a comment, a like, a follow, and a subscribe. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next episode.